Right now, we are on our final, final international spotlight session. Well, we're talking about maximizing benefits from artificial intelligence and data science in a compounded disruptive era. We're looking at the compounded disruptive impact, disruption impacting all industries, business and organization. The role of artificial intelligence and data science in navigating these disruptive times, the need of transformational paradigm shift to maximize value. Well, we've got with us our speaker, Dr. Satyam Priyadarshi, the Technology Fellow and Chief Data Scientist, Halliburton, USA, Managing Director, India Center, Halliburton, Senior Advisor, Trescon. Dr. Satyam is a pioneer in the field of data science, big data, analytics, and emerging technologies, quantum mechanics, and theoretical chemistry. Dr. Priyadarshini is the first chief data scientist of oil and gas industry. He's currently the technology fellow and chief data scientist at Halliburton and also a member of the Mauritius Artificial Intelligence Council, Republic of Mauritius. Dr. Priyadarshi is recognized as one of the top global executives leading innovative business transformation as per the global elite list of Constellation Research Business Transformation. Dr. Priyadarshi is a globally recognized leader with a breadth of scientific knowledge, in-depth technology experience, and extensive business acumen. He's somebody who holds various academic positions as well. His profile has appeared in many magazines, including Chemical and Engineering News, The Scientist, The Silicon India, Oil Review, Middle East, Petroleum Review, Rig Zone, among others. He has, been, he has published over 35 papers and articles, including an expert opinion in magazines like Science. Dr. Priyadarshi obtained his PhD from IIT Bombay and MBA from the Pamplin School of Business, Virginia Tech. Thank you so much, Dr. Priyadarshini for, uh, Priyadarshi, for uh, joining us today. Thank you for your time. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Bhavna. Thank you, Bhavna. Good evening, good afternoon. Um, uh, depending on where you are listening from, for me, it's good morning here in the USA. Um, I think I was hearing the panel before and they were talking about artificial intelligence and cybersecurity um, and uh, how, where the maturity of it is. It's an interesting times. Uh, so what I want to cover a few of the things that what's going on uh, in terms of uh, multiple disruptions that are taking place. And I like the term compounded disruption and then how can we leverage data science, which is the umbrella term that I like rather than just artificial intelligence. Uh, artificial intelligence is important, but data science covers pretty much all of it. Um, hope everybody can hear me. So I'll see if my slides are moving as well. Um, so three, three things that I'll talk about basically, so that one is what's compounded disruptions are. And what's the role of uh, data science, artificial intelligence, uh, and talent transformation? And then how do you maximize the value with a uh, transformational paradigm? Uh, before I start, uh, let me thank a number of people which enable me to do these kind of talks and uh, share my experiences. Uh, that's especially my primary school teachers uh, from India, as well as my PhD advisor from uh, IIT Bombay and uh, another of my classmates uh, and then of course my family uh, which allows me to do these kind of things um, and challenge me every time that uh, saying that dad you are outdated you you need to move fast uh, technology is moving very fast so i have to really keep up with them uh, which is challenging and then of course all of you who are listening to me and uh, and here and uh, the work that i present is not just mine it's a lot of teams that i work with in academic and uh, research environment as well as the, in the corporate world. So everything that is uh, done or presented, it's not, it's not one person, uh, it's a lot of people involved in it. Since Bhavna has already given the introduction, I'm going to skip my introduction uh, here because she's already talked about it. But let's talk about what's happening. Um, if, I, if you look at uh, many things in every industry is impacted, if, uh, even though I'm in oil and gas industry, but if you look at uh, any other industry, one is this revolution which is going on industry 4.0 uh, and what's the challenges associated with it. Uh, the second one is um, oil, oil price uh, is changing. And since, uh, as I said, I'm in oil and gas industry that impacts the businesses. Uh, 
and then the t talent availability or talent readiness for the next generation of uh, uh, evolving uh, revolutions uh, in, in terms of industry. And, and the discussion, I think, earlier in the panel, people were talking about digital transformation uh, and uh, what's happening. Look at the digital maturity, where the industry is. I think somebody mentioned in the previous talk saying that oh, people come and saying, oh, they have a solution. But really, they have not thought out of the business. So this digital maturity plays a big role in that. And then, of course, the speed at which the emerging technology is coming, uh, uh, evolving, and how do we actually leverage it? And then the third uh, one, one of the most important one is what's happening in the energy transition landscape. Uh, and of course, uh, we all know about the pandemic that's happening. So if you think of it, how many, how many different uh, complex, uh, uh, how many different uh, disruptions are happening and that's creating a complex environment. By itself, each of them is a complex, but now it's, a, it's even more complex. So let's look at it, the one which, is, uh, which impacts uh, in a simple terms uh, is industry 4.0. We all know about the different industrial revolutions and you can read law, a lot about it in various places. But what, where we are today, since even the previous panel was talking about cybersecurity, it's all data dependent. So it's all about connecting things and, and finding the value in the real time. And that's, that's where we are in the industry 4.0. So every, in the, every business, every organization, whether it's academic, uh, governmental, uh, e-commerce, uh, oil and gas industry, energy sector, all, uh, pretty much everyone is impacted or will be impacted by it. And how fast we adopt to it is, is the challenge. When we do that, um, what we can look at is, it, this requires what is called digital maturity. What does that mean? If you look at it, where we are, most of us uh, uh, are doing some kind of data-driven aspects or innovation. In fact, the discussion, we will talk about like, uh, oh my God, uh, garbage in, garbage out. But what is garbage in, garbage out that needs to be solved in this area, in this space? Uh, because why are we collecting the garbage in the first place? Uh, so that's where data-driven innovation comes in. And of course, uh, technology plays a big role. Second one is how fast can we adopt these emerging technology? And I'll give you some examples uh, from how, how really we do that. And this leads to what is called continuous transformation which eventually will allow you to grow during disruptive times. And this is what the digital maturity curve is uh, in terms of economic value. As, as in the, even in the previous panel, somebody said, oh, you have to measure business. So every time you have to do something, you have to measure business uh, value. And that's what it is. So let's look at three technologies that we are all very familiar with, or two technologies and one, one aspect of uh, leveraging the technology, as I call the three challenges, search and mobile and of course the talent we keep talking about a lot of a uh, lot of training is going on and uh, localization of the talent is happening very, very important but look at how fast do we adopt when it comes to day to day life we uh, leverage all the search engine for everything personal uh, and all uh, and and we want all those results on mobile in real time but look in terms of businesses which which corporate uh, search engines are really good at finding so if i if i look at the energy sector and look at oil and gas industry for example uh, the business has been there for hundreds of years but if you can take a mechanical or a electrical pump uh, or a equipment and if you type in a corporate search engine you will not even find the metadata right forget about the re repair reports and operational reports and things like that what you find in most of the corporate search engines is like, okay, whatever the website is done and you can search those pages. Uh, uh, that's it. Uh, some documents like that, or how to best practices. But when it comes to real operational aspect of it, uh, that data sits in databases, data warehouses and things like that, but it's very difficult to find. So that is where we have not even leveraged the technology effectively in corporations, which has been mature for almost 30 years now. But when you buy a personal washing machine, uh, even if you buy it two months ago and you say this is making noise, you can get like uh, 20, 30, 40 videos how to fix it. But when it comes to corporate, we have a challenge. Now, when it comes to mobile, you can see that the workflows, decisions, um, you have tools, technologies, and uh, you typically have to install a lot more applications to actually complete any of the workflows. Whereas when it look when you look at the banking sector, I think the gen gentleman in the previous panel, somebody was there from banking sector. 
who was talking about digital transformation, look at their, you, they have a single app pretty much to flow through. That, in, maybe in the back they have multiple things, but when it comes to the user, it's a single interface, you can go through all the workflows. But when you look at the larger companies, so that workflows require like multiple applications. And, and that's, that's a challenge. Now, when it look, well, but all these things require that you have the correct investment, the right investment for the right training and the right transformation in a timely fashion. Like you know, we many of these industries are talking about Hadoop. Hadoop is almost like an outdated technology, but now we are actually training them. But it it, it gets even more complicated. Uh, so everybody was maybe have talked in the sessions before on the cloud technology. So I call it, I call it like a. It's a simple thing. It's a very simple thing. Cloud technology is great. Uh, it simplifies life, but there is a huge complexity of it. Now, just, I just put some examples. Like if you look at within a within a cloud platform, uh, experience level of people who are using it or who needs to use it is a, a number of uh, uh, what I call uh, uh, increasing complexity. Then if you look at the domain, so you have application integration, you have uh, what you call compute, uh, you have data data analytics, data warehouses, data uh, databases, developing tools, all those things combined, and they're like roughly about 20 plus such tools that are existent on that and somebody has to really learn them. And right. And then if you look at the roles, people, people have the data, what do you call data scientists, data engineers, uh, citizen scientists, all these terms people are using left and right, uh, cloud engineers, cloud practitioners, uh, architects, uh, business people, and then of course there are a lot, lot of cloud providers as well, hybrid cloud, private cloud. But if you look at it, while cloud looks very simple, look, look, look at the embedded complexity, and now when it comes to talent transformation, what are we doing about it? We assume that somebody has a button who can actually do the cloud training. That doesn't happen. But it, but we are still making progress, which is good. Uh, and this is what leads to what is the digital transformation. And what does digital transformation means? Uh, these are three terms that everybody uses. Digitization, digitalization, and digital transformation. I have in purpose not in the right order here. And we, we confuse these terms quite a bit. But this becomes very important going forward. Because if you look at it where we are in the industry, we have, if you look at the data, uh, we have in silos multiple copies of data and most of the most of the corporate world does not have provenance on data and information cybersecurity people talk about a lot but uh, in terms of general business operations where is the provenance in the data provenance is how do you track something down and uh, and of course always a question internally silos will talk about ownership but look at where the industry is going with industry 4.0 uh, the cloud paradigm the sensor paradigm the wearables paradigm the robotics, immersive reality, and and in order to actually make that happen, data science plays a significant role. It will address the cybersecurity challenges, the block the leverage of the blockchain to actually bring this together. So this is when when this comes together is when the actual digital transformation takes place, and which is not a, a which is not a buzzword like many people would say. I think not that they don't they don't do much homework actually to understand what it is. But if you look at it, the digital transformation is a, it is a change associated with the application of digital technology and the solutions that are required for that business so that it impacts all aspects of the business. So you can actually modify your business models, remain competitive, sustainable, and resilient. And that is, that is what it addresses all the complex disruptions that I talked earlier. Let's see, you know, very simple things. I'll, do we really know how, how does that paradigm shift happen? How do you really think differently? So here is an example, and if the chat box is working, you can you can type your answers. Uh, what do you see, or wh how many how many animals do you see here? Give it thirty seconds or so, if anybody has answers. Now all of all of you probably saw some as um, what I would say um, five, six, four of these animals in that picture. For me, it's a black and white pixel diagram. But if but if if were to write a proper algorithm, what what kind of predictive engine am I going to build? What is the inference engine I'm going to build? What does it infer? Right. That is where the whole game of uh, 
data science is you start with some data you build something and then you start building these uh, models that will actually impact the business but if you look at this picture uh, you see uh, and you can see that whether you have you, you can think differently or not uh, if you got if you got these many uh, animals in your counting and i bet like very few people actually get all of them this is this is the power of actually leveraging the data the digital maturity the talent and when you can actually think differently uh, from a simple diagram like that so if you think the previous di this diagram is just a structured data that you have and now you are building something for inferring for the business the hidden hidden things that you can't really interpret but in order to do that uh, as i said data science plays a significant role and and if when i look at this it is a simple simple diagram like this data science is uh, is an umbrella term data is there the computing paradigm is there ai ml are just tools and then the talent uh, transformation is very important that's the most critical part in this how does that work a simple methodology is that you start building proof of value many people will talk about proof of concept and i i don't like that term personally because the concept of value from data is proven the concept of artificial intelligence is proved what we need to do is proof of value in our business and then you start building the predictive engines then the inference engines and then you start building what is called the prescriptive engines so that any activity that takes place is automatically tells you what actions to take and that's what the decision making comes in a lot of people we don't talk much about decision making process by leveraging data science and artificial intelligence but that is what at the end of the game for the business is so just uh, in, in in interest of time i'll talk about one particular use case uh, from oil and gas industry what what i as i said a lot of data exist in these uh, businesses but i call them mostly dark data because we never actually leverage them effectively there are reports after reports talking about 5% data 1% data that industry uses so i'm i'm not going to go in that number uh, uh, discussion but it certainly tells you that very limited amount of data is actually used to effectively create value so that becomes dark data actually now if you look at it uh, you have a lot of data in an unstructured format which is significant amount in many businesses and uh, and you can actually leverage it in this study actually we we leverage this pdf files and this block which is no english there a uh, lot of words uh, uh, which are meaning in technical terms uh, and we leverage that data to actually create value and that value was roughly about 200 million dollars per year from 16000 pdf files uh, for a sing, for, for particular operations it has been published uh, using our smart methodology and uh, it, and what it tells you now based on this analysis you can now uh, you have proven the value in data now you are building the predictive engine then you then your inference engine and then one day you will have a prescriptive engine this is a journey this is doesn't happen overnight but people uh, people need to have patience when they are building these things for 30 40 50 years we have collected the data but we want results from uh, any of these data science tools uh, within a week that doesn't happen so this is the journey that one has to take place and if you look at it um, th this is how the digital maturity eventually evolves and you you have actually first evolved from in this concept let's how much of the business is actually digitized most of us is about 60 70 percent no 100 percent is achieve, achievable in today's technology or industry 4.0 era we could actually leverage in digitalization to 80 percent for sure and then eventually we will have digital transformation when it matures we will have a system which is completely resilient sustainable and and growth uh, continues in com complex disruptive times Many of the things that I talked about have been published uh, uh, in various articles. These are some two books. They are not mine, somebody else's, but they have written, a, they're, they're very well done. Um, with that, I will stop here and thank you very much. Uh, if there are any questions, I'm happy to take. Sure. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Satyam. Well, uh, the questions are not there, but a lot of uh, answers did come from a lot of uh, audience members when you'd ask the question. Uh, with regards yeah. to how many animals and all of that was there in the picture. But thank you so much, Dr. Satyam. It's always so great to have you as a part of the World AI Show. Thank you once again. Thank you so much, Bhavana. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.